Good morning, Joseph Simon with Bumbling Acres. I'm uh, about to on my way to my about to walk into my second my my full time job other than homesteading. And uh, love to wear bow ties, by the way. It's one of my favorite things to wear. So get to see me in my work routine every now and again. But wanted to touch base with you guys and talk about um, kind of the three things that are on my mind this morning: homesteading, insecurities, and vulnerability. Um, as I think I've tried to make it painfully clear, uh, probably overly made it painfully clear, but such is life. Um, I'm, I'm learning as I'm learning this for many, many of these experiences are first time experiences for me. Um, you know, uh, picking things out of a garden, that's pretty much first time for me. My grandpa ran a garden. Um, I had zero practical knowledge of running a garden, um, raising chickens zero practical effect of raising chickens and um, I, I had zero practical effects of what it was like to live on a on, on any kind of sized property um, I had never I'd lived in a Marine Corps barracks I've lived in a couple of apartments I have I've rented a you know room in a house before but I'd never live on a four and four, four plus acre property before so land management and kind of things of those natures that's a first um, organizing my tools and organizing everything so that it's effectively stored so that my fiance and my son can hide them everywhere after they use them you know the fun parts of, of life but what I wanted to you know um, insecurities and vulnerabilities are a part of or at least have been a part of this life for me Putting yourself into situations that you are not comfortable with or you have no experience of are going to force you to come face to face with some realities and some real things and some difficult situations. This is all brought on by the fact is, you know, we expanded our chicken flock. Um, we had an opportunity, somebody, we were able to get 14 baby chicks, um, no charge, so we went on and took them. We set up our brooding area, we set it up in a different area uh, than we had before. And we've lost more than half of our baby chicks so far. And, you know, um, I think there's this mentality that if you're working the land and you're producing that you're supposed to be this heartless, like the, you know, industrial ag person. Like, these are just whatever they are. They're just food. You don't, you don't have any responsibility to treat. Like, I think that's bonkers. Um, I mean, make no mistake, they are producing, they, they are food producers for me. Um, you know, these are chickens that will lay eggs. Uh, next year we're going to add chickens that will be meat. Um, you know, but they, there is a, in my opinion, a social contract between, uh, me and then the animals and that I will provide them a safe, happy, healthy home while they are on this earth. And in exchange for that arrangement, they will provide me food. Um, I live up to my end of the bargain. They live up to their end of the bargain. Uh, and that's that's a symbiotic relationship between the two. It's not a predator prey. I invest in them They provide for me uh, But part of the difficult thing is when you've got situations especially with chicks um, you know it You know last night lost half suddenly I, I, I start doing the research that I honestly should have done before and that's convicting. Um, and, and to find out all these things that we kind of set up our brooding in a bad spot. Um, in an area that we... It is possible that these chicks are sick chicks. That we got a batch of sick chicks. That is possible. We bought a whole batch from somebody. So it is possible that this is just... There was, there was illness and weakness bred into them. Um, but upon review, looking through, there are some things that we hadn't done in our brooder um, that we definitely needed to do. Uh, that that would have uh, that would make a difference and that hindsight learning is is a part of life but when it's infecting life that's really really tough to take and you know I, I guess I'm gonna just spell if you want to be some super macho like nah I don't feel anything bro I, I don't go into homesteading um, because you need to feel a connection to your family, a connection to the land, a connection to the creatures, to the animals and everything on your property. If you just want to be some douche canoe person who doesn't have a connection with anyone, probably shouldn't be responsible for producing food or whatever. But um, it's, 
gonna tangent off, excuse me. Uh, I really wanted to kind of address, you know, insecurities, um, and kind of, you know, that, that you're gonna be forced to come face to face with them through homesteading. Still rewarding, still wouldn't change it. Can't wait to get home, move some more wood chips. I swear my job is pretty much shoveler, should, if I had a business card, say shoveler, a mover of things, because that's what we're doing. We're setting up everything still. And I feel like we're gonna be in setup forever. Um, but still worth it. But you should be prepared for having to come face to face with your own vulnerabilities, your own insecurities.